most common applications of exponential functions is with money. Okay, interest, compounding interest, when you have a bank account or you make some kind of investment, something like that, those are exponential functions. So we've got two scenarios here. We have interest that is compounded n times per year. Here's the formula for it. Um, you do need to be familiar with this. So <clears throat> the A here represents the amount after a certain period of time. The big P, the capital P, represents, that stands for principal. <clears throat> not Mrs. Hodges, uh, but the money that you invest, okay, the principal slash investment slash initial amount. It can be phrased several different ways. Okay, that's what goes in front of the parentheses. Then there's always a one the rate here, okay, R stands for the rate. You've got to make sure that you express the percent as a decimal, okay? Change your percent to a decimal. Form, decimal is misleading, decimal form. Um, before you plug that into the equation. N is the number of times per year. So they may come out and just say six times per year, three times per year, or they may say monthly, they may say weekly. Okay, <clears throat> um, that's N right there. And then the last variable there is the T, that is in the exponent, that is the number of years. Okay, T is the number of years. So that's what everything in that equation means. Now, pretty complicated. Um, well, it's not complicated, it just has a lot of pieces. Okay, it has a lot of pieces. Uh, there's another scenario <clears throat> where instead of the interest being compounded a certain number of times per year, it's compounded continuously. So it will have that word. If it says continuously, then you use this other simplified formula. Okay? A still represents the same thing. P still represents the same thing. E is the button on your calculator. <clears throat> Um, R is still the same thing, okay, the rate, change the percent to decimal form, and then T is still the number of years, okay, um, but it's PERT, okay, that's only if the word compounded continuously is in the equation do you use PERT, otherwise it's a certain number of times per year and you use the other formula. Okay, so let's see how we use these. <clears throat> you invest $12,000 at an annual rate of 3%. Find the balance after five years when the interest is compounded. We're going to look at three scenarios. Quarterly, monthly, and continuously. So let's identify the pieces that they gave us. You invest $12,000. That is P at an annual rate of 3%. We've got to change the percent to decimal form. We move the decimal two places to the left. So that is 0.03 is what we're going to plug into the equation. Find the balance after five years. That's T. If it's compounded quarterly, that means every quarter four times per year. So that means n is four. So let's plug all this into our equation. Let's set it up before we type it into the calculator. A, that's what we're looking for, the balance. Okay, the balance is A is equal to the principal, 12,000 times one plus the rate, 
0.03 over n to the n times t. Okay. This is what we're going to type into our calculator. Well, we've got to be careful when we type it in. Alright, we've got 12,000 parentheses. 1 plus 0 0.03 over 4. You do not need any extra parentheses there. Okay, just put the parentheses the way they're written in the problem. Raised to the, now I encourage you 4 times 5 is very easy. Just go ahead and multiply that out to 20. Because if you don't, you're going to have to put parentheses around it. Okay, if you don't go ahead and multiply 4 times 5 to give you 20, you've got to remember to put parentheses around that. Because if you don't, if you leave the parentheses off, it is going to change your answer significantly. Because your calculator does order of operations, and you're going to get a very different answer if you leave off the parentheses. So, just go ahead and multiply the 4 times 5 and save yourself some trouble. Okay, so our balance after five years is $13,934.21. We're talking about money, so go ahead and just round the two places after the decimal. Okay, let's see if that, how much that changes if it's compounding monthly. It's compounding more times per year, maybe we'll make some more money. Okay, if it's compounded monthly, then that means it's going to compound 12 times every year. So our problem is set up exactly the same way. Nothing else changes except for the end. Okay, so I'm going to... Twelve times five is sixty. So this time we make thirteen thousand nine hundred and thirty nine dollars and forty cents. So we make about five more dollars when it's compounded twelve times a year as opposed to four times a year. Well, continuously means that it's like compounded all the time. I mean, as often as it possibly can, um, that's what the continuously means. So this is PERT. So A equals the principal times E to the R times T, five years, 12,000, oops, two zeros times E to the, and the nice thing about the E is that it already put the parentheses there for us, we don't have to remember that part, R times T, so we get $13,942, so not really that much more when it's compounded continuously versus uh, monthly. Okay, and not even ten dollars more than when it was compounded quarterly. Uh, now, let's have a little bit of reality check. Three percent is actually pretty high. Uh, there are very few accounts that you're going to find where you're going to get three percent interest. Um, so, uh, investing, you actually you got to have a good little bit of money uh, to invest to actually. Be able to earn much interest because I mean, this is over five years and we've earned what almost two thousand dollars just in interest, not adding anything to the account. Um, and like I said, three percent is pretty high. You're very rarely are you going to find that interest rate anywhere. Okay, so maybe back in CK is another common application of exponential functions. Uh, in 1986, a nuclear reactor accident occurred in Chernobyl in what was then the Soviet Union, which is now Russia. Uh, well, close to Russia, part of it is Russia. Anyways, 
The explosions spread highly toxic radioactive chemicals such as plutonium over hundreds of square miles and the government evacuated the city and the surrounding area. To see why the city is now uninhabited, nobody, still nobody lived there, uh, and that was over 30 years ago, before I was even born. Um, here's the model. P is equal to 10 times 1 half to the T over 24,100. That represents the amount of plutonium that remains after an initial amount of 10 pounds, just 10 pounds of this um, uh, radioactive material was released. And this is the model that represents how much is still in that area. Um, T equals zero represents 1986. You gotta look out for things like this in these word problems when they tell you um, what T represents. So T equals zero represents the year 1986. All right, how much of the 10 pounds will remain this year? Okay, how much of the 10 pounds will remain this year? So we've got to figure out, well, what are we plugging into this equation? So if T equals zero represents 1986, what are we going to plug in for T for 2017? How many years has it been since 1986? 31 years. Okay, 31 years. So we're going to plug in 31 into our equation here. So 31 divided by 24,100. So put parentheses where the problem has parentheses, and then our exponent has more than one number in it, so we've got to put parentheses around that. So after 31 years, there's still almost exactly 10 pounds. It's 9.9991 pounds of this radioactive material is still in that area, which 10 pounds doesn't sound like much, but when you're talking about radioactive material, it's pretty serious stuff. 10 pounds is a lot. Okay, so how about after 100,000 years? Well, we don't have to figure anything out on that one. They just tell us after a certain number of years. So we're going to plug 100,000 into the problem. And then that's zeros there, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, divided by 24... Oh wait, hang on. I got did I get I put too many zeros in that first one, didn't I? I sure did. I'm gonna have to go back and fix that. Okay. Uh, after a hundred thousand years, uh, we significantly decrease, but still a hundred thousand years is a really, really long time. Um, and it's taken that long for it to go down to half a pound. Uh, let me go back and fix my number here from the first one because I put too many zeros in my 24,100. Oh, and guess what? It really doesn't change it all that much. I just got to move my decimal. Uh, I got to move. It's 9.991. Okay, so... A little bit less, but still almost exactly the same amount after 31 years. Okay? So look at another example. Uh, let's talk about this problem. It says consider the model. We don't really have a um, um, context for it, but here's our model. 500 times 0.2 to the x. Uh, let's make a general quick sketch of this based on what we learned yesterday. Um, remember what we learned yesterday, when the base is less than 1, between 0 and 1, then it's going to be a decreasing function, uh, and it's still going to go through the point 0, 1, but it's going to be a decreasing function. So here's a general quick sketch of the model. It's not 100% accurate, but it gives us a general idea of what's going on. Um, the initial value, okay, the initial value of this, this means when we plug in zero, what do we get? So when we plug in zero, we've got 500 
times 0.2 to the 0. What do we learn?